Okay, last part of eukaryotic internal structures is the cytoskeleton. Now, the cytoskeleton is actually kind of what give, well, I mean, it's like a skeleton for the cell, as you might guess from the name. Um, this is particularly important in cells that don't have a cell wall. And the cells that do have a cell wall, it's still important, but it's not what's going to give structure and shape to the cell. But for cells like protozoa and animal cells, um, this is what gives structure and shape to the cells. Um, just the same way that your body gives, or your skeleton gives structure and shape to your body. Uh, the cytoskeleton is composed of long protein fibers, um, and uh, there are three varieties of these protein fibers, uh, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments, which isn't down here, but we'll write it in. Intermediate filaments. There it goes. So starting off with microtubules. Microtubules are the largest of the three structures. Um, and uh, they're actually made out of, um, well, they're made out of these tubes, but they're not just one tube. They're an arrangement of tube triplets and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, good. Yeah, so there's like nine of these tube triplets arranged in a circle. And that's what makes up um, a microtubule complex. Um, and each of these uh, like tubes itself is made up of a number of strands of proteins. Um, there's two main functions of the microtubules, and that is structure and transport. Uh, microtubules are very stiff, but also fairly transient, meaning that they can be built very quickly. They can also be taken down very quickly. Um, all microtubules in most eukaryotic cells uh, originate from what's called the microtubule organizing complex, uh, which is a part of the centrioles which you'll often see represented as being like these two kind of barrel-looking things arranged like that. In animal cells and some protozoa, they play a very important role in mitosis because these are what puts out microtubules, which are going to be what grabs hold of the chromosomes and pulls the chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell during mitosis. But... Um, they're useful for a lot more than just that. Um, these things tend to, right, so if we have a cell here and we have like, you know, your nucleus here, you're probably going to have your microtubule organizing complex located somewhere fairly close to the nucleus. And microtubules are going to spread out. From there, out to the cell, to the edges of the cell. And uh, these microtubules are going to serve as um, transport pathways. There's going to be these little guys um, called motor proteins uh, or kinesin that walk down and these other little guys called dynin that are going to hop back the other direction. And so remember we talked about those vesicles 
and we said, but well, they move around to they move or what moves things around to where they're going. Well, vesicles don't have like little propellers on them. The way they move around is they get picked up by one of these walking proteins and taken out to where they need to go. Um, the protein that makes them up, surprise, surprise, is known as tubulin. And uh, like I said, these are very, very stiff. So if you try to compress them, they're very strong versus compression. But uh, if you pull them, they tend to fall apart. Um, so they're going to give kind of like the gross shape of the cell by by stretching out and bracing against areas of the cell. These are also the uh, structures that make up the eukaryotic flagella. All right. The eukaryotic flagella has these um, microtubule arrangements, and what happens is that um, one side will pull and the other will push, and that causes the flagella to swing one way or swing the other way. So it's actually a very different motion than the more propeller-like bacterial flagella, and it's a much, much larger, more complicated structure. Microfilaments are very, very thin. They're the, the thinnest of the cytoskeletal components. Um, and uh, they also resist compression fairly well, but are weak against stretching. Um, and these are used for structure, um, particularly structure along the outside. of a cell. So you have an amoeba like this. The shape of this uh, cell membrane is usually made by this network of microfilaments that brace against the edge and these microfilaments can push against each other to extend a pseudopod outwards. So that's sort of how they are used in movement. They're also things that uh, uh, that can be used for the movement of internal vesicles and things like that. Like uh, something might hop on a microtubule heading from the nucleus outwards and then it might go out, and then it might hop on to the network of microfilaments, um, which you can think of as being kind of like the side streets of the cell, and get carried to where exactly it is that it needs to be. Um, these microfilaments, um, so actin is the protein that makes up the microfilament. Myosin is the uh, the motor protein that moves them around. And if you've had anatomy and physiology, you might recognize these because actin and myosin are the proteins involved in muscular contraction. And so what allows your muscles to contract is actually these microfilaments contracting against each other, right? And just like they can exert force to shrink your muscle cells, they can also exert force to expand and change the shape of a, of a pseudopod, of an amoeba, or something like that. Last, we have intermediate filaments. Um, intermediate filaments, as you might guess, are um, intermediate in size. They're bigger than microfilaments, but smaller than microtubules. Um, they are composed of various proteins and they tend to attach to um, like glycoproteins or proteoglycans, which are basically a mixture of proteins and polysaccharides. Um, and uh, 
these are, are structural only. They don't do movement. Things don't walk down them for the most part, and they aren't used to move the cell through like flagella or pseudopods or anything like that. Um, the intermediate filaments uh, are like ropes. So they're actually strong against pulling, against tension. But like a rope, you push them and they just go bleh, and they collapse, right? So um, the other two are stiff but weak to pulling. This one is strong to pulling but weak to compression. And together they work together to sort of like hold the cell into shape. Um, intermediate filaments are almost always going to be attached to structures in the plasma membrane. In animal cells, this is usually going to be a uh, junction protein, uh, but in um, protozoa could be a bunch of different stuff. Okay, so that's it for the internal structures of eukaryotes. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the external structure of eukaryotes.